Now, ceremonies are taking place in Australia and South Africa to mark the start of construction on the world's biggest telescope. It's called the Square Kilometre Array, or SKA. It's a network of radio antennae, in fact, spread across the two continents, and it's going to aim to address some of the outstanding questions in astrophysics. Uh, what you see there is an artist's impression of what this whole thing is going to look like. It's massive, isn't it? Uh, it's going to take some six years to complete as well. Well, we can go live to Professor Virginia Kilborn, who is the chief scientist at Swinburne University of Technology and uh, is actually at the launch event for the SKA telescope right now in Perth in Australia. Virginia, very good of you to join us. I hope you're not missing out on the, uh, the volivants on the champagne. But look, I I've never seen anything quite like that. We've got to think about a whole different world of what a telescope is here, it seems. That's exactly right. So this is a telescope that looks at radio waves rather than the optical waves that we can see with our eyes. So we need to use things like antennae or satellite dishes, um, large satellite dishes, which are going to then pick up signals from right across the universe back to the um, beginning of the universe. Right. OK, only that. Um, how, I mean, how yeah. much of an advance does that represent in terms of what you've been able to explore and discover so far? It sounds exponential. It sounds like science fiction, actually. <laughs> it is a little bit like science fiction, um, but it is actually science fact. So we're going to be able to um, really multiply by um, hundreds of times the power of the um, telescopes that we have today. So where today we might be able to observe, say, um, 100,000 galaxies, we'll be now looking at millions of galaxies um, and potentially looking at stars and galaxies as they form in the very, very early universe for the first time. I mean, it's obviously a, a very exciting moment for yourself, for many of your colleagues. We've got to wait yep. six years before it's actually built or up and running, hopefully. How long before you start getting data back, before you start finding out things? Well, we've actually got two Pathfinder instruments that are currently working both here in Australia and in South Africa. So we're already, already getting very interesting results from these Pathfinder um, telescopes. And we've seen things that we haven't seen before, such as imaging the very centre of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, and also detecting the gas um, between galaxies as they're um, smashing into each other. So we'll continue to see these discoveries over the next uh, four, five, six years as we build the new observatories. And then we'll have a period where we're, um, well, we don't know what we're going to find. We've got some ideas of what we want to look at. But when you've got a leap in technology like this, um, really, the sky's not the limit anymore. No, well, that's it. I mean, I, I can see the attraction and exciting it's coming in already. Um, do you just need one of these for, for, for the universe? Or could there be more? Well, we could have, um, have more, but the beauty of these telescopes is that they're spread over really large areas um, in both of our um, countries. So in Australia... It's in Western Australia, um, really out in the outback where there's not much radio signal. There's no one driving past with a mobile phone. So it's very quiet in the radio. So we can see um, really faint signals from the early universe. And that's what's going to make the difference with this telescope. 